All right, now let's get building. Let's see how to actually use an email design system to go ahead and create some really good looking emails really fast. So here we are actually in the Get Response Automation Creator. So this is just an example of a super simple workflow that we can use to automatically send out to our emails whenever someone signs up. So whenever someone first signs up for our bootcamp list, we will immediately send them a welcome message. Then we'll wait for a couple of days. We'll send them some you know, follow-up educational information. And then let's say two days later, we send some kind of promotional offer, uh, what we think they may be interested in. Of course, the beauty of marketing automation is that you can really you know, create any number of scenarios or journeys that you want your new subscribers or new customers to go through. For the purpose of this webinar to show you how to build these three messages really fast, we'll keep it super simple. But of course, you know, very commonly, whenever you are you know, using automation to send your messages, you're also using other conditions or checking to see how your contacts engage with those messages and then trigger follow-up content based on their engagement. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on here with all these different conditions and different actions and filters you have uh, within marketing automation. But for this webinar, we'll just keep it super simple and just send out a series of messages uh, you know, after someone's signs up with some delays in between. And so let's go ahead and see how we can build our welcome message. So we're actually going to choose to create a new message. And then we just want to give it a quick name so we can find it later. So this is just the welcome, the subject line. Thanks so much for joining us. And a little preview text here, you know, here's what's next or something like that. Now we want to just design our message. And something I can just quickly point out before we actually start building is that if you don't already have some templates designed, maybe that you know, you've worked with, with a you know, designer on or you've used them previously and you know that's what you would like to use as the base of what we can call like your design system, I would highly recommend to browse through these existing pre-designed messages and actually go ahead and just save elements of them that you like that you can customize to match your branding and your style, and then use them again and again, uh, you know, and start building your own system based on these pre-designed, pre-configured uh, elements in the templates. Because these are actually, you know, formatted, have the right spacing and padding. Um, so that kind of is just done for you. And you can just, you know, change up the colors or things like that, and then save these elements and use them whenever you're quickly building your own messages. So you could do that from these kind of pre-designed ones. You can also start with the blank templates and these layouts and even just save elements of the layouts that you know you'd like to use again uh, in your messages. So that's how I would recommend getting started with your design system if you haven't yet, you know, if you don't already have templates and designs that you would like to use and save those elements. So I'm actually going to start with a blank template here. And we can see how to build that. So to start us off, I'm just going to quickly format this section, uh, this header section here, because the way I have uh, my elements configured already, I don't actually need some of this uh, formatted in this way. So I'll just quickly change the view online link to be centered. And I actually don't want the logo included here uh, because it'll be in my header that I already have saved, uh, which you'll be able to see in just a minute. And so these are actually saved as what's called my blocks. So anytime you save an element, uh, you know, within your message, template. It's this little icon here. So you can save sections, you can save, you know, single elements themselves. Uh, and that's how you actually use them again as your blocks. And so I have quite a lot of uh, blocks here that I have just created by saving different elements of templates that I liked and that I think would work uh, for this email series. Uh, so it makes it a lot faster for me. And I don't have to reformat all of these, uh, you know, messages. They're basically ready to go. And I just put them together like pieces of a puzzle. One thing that I will use in every single one of these templates is the same footer here. So I can actually start at the bottom. Uh, so this is a section that I'm going to put at the bottom of every message that I use because I always want to make sure to go ahead and offer a link to my website and also to different, uh, you know, icons that are already linked, we can say, uh, to my social media profiles. But now I can go ahead and build the rest of my message. I'm going to go ahead and delete this section here because I won't need it. And I'll start from the top. And I have a block that's called like H1, so like for a header. And so I can go ahead and just search for that because you can name them and then search for them. It makes it a lot easier if you can recall because probably you would name them uh, based on, you know, obviously what's inside or where you want to use them. So that would make it just faster. And so this is where, for example, I know I pretty much will always have my logo up top and then this text that I could customize. But thankfully, in this example, it works well. Uh, and now it's just about building all the blocks. But you'll see whenever you select the section or the block, you can still customize it further if you need to, but that's kind of the beauty of it is that it already has all of these kind of, you know, borders selected for me. I don't have to go do that again. 
And now I'll just search for the next element. And I like for my welcome messages to have kind of a nice fun design, kind of maybe a little bit whimsical. So a GIF is a good uh, way to achieve that. But of course, one that's a little bit, let's say, light, uh, like a light GIF. You don't want it to be too heavy, you know, be, take too long to load. So this kind of like animation, so very small animation uh, that repeats, you know, in this kind of GIF format, I would say is a really cool, a cool way to get started with that. And so now I want to just go ahead and find kind of the body section for my message. So this is, you know, different, different elements I could go ahead and look for that I know I have. But let me actually go ahead and search for it because I remember I had something about text. I think it was text with a button section. Exactly. So I think it was maybe this one. So I'm going to put that underneath. So this is a good looking for a section here, looking here. Okay, I'll do cut that. Okay, so this is a good looking first section for my message. And so this is where if you were building it, you know, for a different message, you can just change up the copy you used from the message that you saved this from and it would save you a lot of time. And so I'm gonna go ahead and actually add an additional section to this email to give me a little bit of space. I wanna have a space between the two sections of my email. So you just go ahead and add a section and add a little spacer here. And then I want to add just a little bit more text, a little bit more information. I could stop here. It's pretty common for welcome messages to be, you know, pretty short and to the point, but I have a little bit more I'd like to say. And so I think I have it. This is a really good example of one I would like to recommend that you actually, if you do something like this, because I think it's cool to actually, uh, oops, I had to move this section here, put that in between them. Cool, there because I think sometimes it looks nice to actually use emojis or little icons instead of uh, you know standard bullet points, but they take kind of a minute to set up and to format the spacing right. So I'd say once you did that and it worked, it's a perfect candidate to save uh, actually as, uh, as, as a block for you to easily reuse it. Um, and you could change the emoji out if you wanted uh, to change it up, but then it honors all that same spacing. And so that's basically it. This could be our welcome message. It looks really good to go. Uh, like, you know, kind of two sections. There's a little bit of a spacer here. And so we can move on and go to our next message. So we've already configured our name and subject line. So we can just go ahead and finish this. All right, so now we're ready to build our second message. Uh, so this will be our educational follow-up message. So we'll go ahead and create a new one here again. And we can name this one, you know, just content follow-up. So it's good to send over some information next that just kind of, you know, builds up on what you've kind of offered up whenever they signed up for you and just relevant, you know, content, educational information that they would find helpful. Uh, so not really getting too heavy in your promotional offers just yet. And so we can just call this like our best tips and then preview text like, you know, how, can, how we can help you, something like this. Now let's go design our message yet again. So we can remember we can start from a blank template because we'll be able to use some of our already saved elements uh, that we'll be using again and again for all of our messages. So, but really quick, I do need to configure this one just one more time here and go ahead and center it. And we can go ahead and remove our logo because we know we're always using uh, that logo in our first little block here. And so this one, I already had it saved as for example, I think I called it like an educational follow-up header. So we can see what I've got. Yeah, here we go. But you can see this looks exactly like the header, uh, basically, that we used in this welcome message. This was just an example where the text was already correct and ready to go, so it saves me even more time. Uh, but, you know, this is a prime example of where that H1, a welcome message header, would be perfect. And I could use it again and again if all I need is a logo and my, uh, you know, top header text to be this font and this bold. But this has a little bit more follow-up information here. And then, as usual, I put a graphic underneath. Uh, and so I can just go ahead and find my block that I am using for this graphic here. And it's already formatted with the section that I need it. So I think it was, this one was actually the brainstorm. That's what I had it as, yeah, brainstorm graphic or the section. And so you can see here, I've often saved it as a section itself rather than just the graphic, but I also have the graphic saved in case I wanna use it. And that's because for these this email series, I like to have this kind of a border. And so the borders are already configured because if I didn't have it already, you know, kind of saved and I had to keep building this, I'd have to keep saving um, and editing this little section to have this border with the right font color and, you know, the right uh, weight for this line. So it just saves me a lot of time if I know for this 
this series, I wanted to go ahead and have uh, these kind of border designs. I could go ahead and just save things as sections uh, so they'll already have that uh, saved, um, you know, and configured on them, which, you know, saves you clicks and time. And so now we just want to add a CTA underneath the graphic. So a button here. So since this is kind of like an educational follow-up, usually it could be, you know, download the ebook for free or go to this blog post, um, you know, whatever basically you're referring to uh, in the first section here. And now I want to go ahead and do that thing where I actually put a bit of a space in between these sections here. And so you just need to go to the section area and add a spacer, or add a section, and then you add a spacer to it. So it just puts a little bit of a, you know, kind of a break for your eye between the sections that we're using and creating with these borders. And then I want to go ahead and do something else that I think is really helpful uh, using these save blocks for is another kind of way to actually show the kind of, you know, a different way to show bullets. And it's again kind of using like a graphic element. In this case, instead of an emoji, it's basically like an icon. And oops, I did that thing again with our spacer in our new section here. I keep accidentally putting them, not putting them in between. Cool, there we go. So this just puts that little break there. And so this is a cool example of instead of just using like a bullet point, just your standard, you know, text bullet points, you can actually kind of break it up and show it vertically with different sections and using an icon. But again, that would just take a few bits, you know, a few moments to set it up uh, to actually format it properly. So you can just save them as sections and just use them again. So I think it's a really cool way to do that. Uh, and it just looks nice uh, and is, you know, a little bit more interesting, let's say, uh, than just your standard kind of, you know, bullets. And so I think we had one more. I have here, I'm just scrolling sometimes uh, here, and then there's like this. And so I think it just looks a little bit more visually appealing. Uh, you know, there's different, like it's already, you know, hyperlinked here, one of the texts that could save you some time as well. You don't have to format that, you just change your links out. Um, and so that's something I, I would definitely recommend as well. And then we had just a bit more details in this section. So I'm gonna do one more time, add one more section in between here and put in our spacer. And then this is a nice uh, block that I have saved that I would be using probably quite frequently and also able to change the color on it. So I have this like blue box section because so far you can see usually I'm using, you know, white backgrounds and actually the blue button, which, you know, it's also a good idea to save your button stylings as well so as standalone uh, elements. But then this is like kind of, you know, inverting it basically and using my design styling of blue and yellow. Uh, so, but this would be a cool one where you could, you know, just easily change up the colors, but you have the formatting uh, set up right. And then, of course, to round it out, we know we have our social media icons that we will use in every single of our emails. So this is an example of one we'll just use again and again. And so this is our follow-up message. So this is quite cool. It helped us having kind of these different elements saved. And then, you know, for future messages that I'm sending, I will be using, you know, those different vertical bullet points again and again. Um, you know, maybe just using one of them, but in changing the text out. And next, I just want to actually go ahead and edit my workflow again really quick. I think I forgot to save that. So we'll actually just add in another wait because we need to send one more message here. In two days, then I want to actually send my final kind of promotional message. Of course, this should never be the final message you ever send to your contacts, uh, but this is just what we'll have time to show today, uh, three messages. And now we can kind of do a bit of a more promotional offer. And so they can call this kind of like our promotional offer. And, you know, let us solve that problem. So, you know, it's a good idea to actually, you know, formulate your subject lines to actually be specific to how you actually help solve these problems or are the solution that they need. Um, you know, here's why you'll love it. And now we just want to design our final message. Again, going to our blank template and using our saved elements. So one more time editing this bit here, because these are not, these can't be saved, you know, as actual elements and blocks because they are required to be in each email that you send. And so you do just have to kind of play with that one whenever you're, if you, if you want to customize it from what it, what it already is. And now let's go ahead and find, we've got some interesting, interesting graphics here. So I think this was the promotional section header. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. But again, this is quite similar to the other headers I've been using. But this one just, for example, has a button here at the top, uh, you know, within this content rather than the graphic. Um, so we're just slightly changing it up here. 
And so we want to add the CTA, you know, as high as we can for those promo offers. And then we can go ahead and just add our graphic underneath the button itself. And this is going to be pretty simple. So this should hopefully be enough, you know, to get them interested in what you're offering. But, you know, just in case it's not and people actually do continue to scroll on and you can add a little bit more information. We're going to add one more of these sections in between to give a little bit of space and then have a little bit more content, uh, you know, to describe our offer in a bit more detail. So this one, I believe we were calling it like section text. So this is just a little bit different than something we've been doing. So let me try to get it underneath my section here. There we go. I managed this time. Cool. So just a little bit more details about what it is that you're offering. A little bit more details here. And then this is another one that I think would be good to use in other details. So you could, you know, change out the graphic here. But uh, these would just take a bit of time to set up, you know, in the future with your different, uh, you know, subheadlines and details, uh, detailed text there. Um, so this could be a little bit more information for you to use. And then we just need one more CTA, which I believe is actually this one here. So you added your CTA up here to hopefully get them to click, uh, you know, right from, you know, what it is that you've explained and the benefits here. And then here at the bottom as well, after you've given a bit more details. And the only thing we need now is our standard social media icons that we put at the bottom. Just put it underneath there. Cool. So that looks good. All right. So these are our three emails. So we can go ahead and move on. And technically, we have built three emails. Now, I know, you know, you may be thinking, well, Abby, you had all of these uh, elements already saved, which is indeed true. But that's the whole point of it, basically. So now when I'm wanting to create messages, you know, four, five, six later on, I can actually go ahead and just start, cop you know, moving and using different elements uh, of these emails um, and mixing and matching them. I had these, I knew how I wanted them to be set up specifically, and now moving forward, I can just use different sections, maybe take away some of the borders that I used and just use some of the elements uh, themselves. And I can quickly just show you what it's looking like, just give you a quick preview of the messages. So I'll just drag them over here so you can see them, you know, what they're looking like in our preview here. Uh, so yeah, so there, here's our welcome message. It looks really nice. Here's what it looks like for us to educate our new signups, and then to promote uh, our particular offer as well.